You, my friend, are destined for greatness and meant to live a life filled with freedom. Freedom from sin, freedom from oppression, freedom from poverty, and freedom from any dark forces that may try to keep you captive. God desires nothing more than to see you thrive and break free from any chains that may be holding you back. Many of you may wonder why, despite being believers, you still find yourself struggling with various forms of spiritual, financial, and mental bondage. You may ask, if God has already won the ultimate victory and conquered death itself, why do I still feel trapped? When Jesus was on the cross, he declared, it is finished. This powerful statement signifies that he paid the full price for anything that could hold you captive. He took on your sufferings and limitations so that you can truly be free. As the Bible says, whosoever the Son sets free will be free indeed, John 8.36. It is important to remember that nothing in this world occurs by mere coincidence. The spiritual realm only intervenes in our physical lives based on legal grounds. Proverbs 26, two states, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. In other words, Every limitation and form of captivity you experience can be traced back to a cause. These causes may include personal sin, ignorance, or inherited negative patterns. But regardless of the reason behind your current struggles, always remember that Jesus said, it is finished. He has already paid the price for your freedom, and it is now up to you to claim it. The enemy will undoubtedly challenge your faith, but do not be intimidated by the size or intensity of the attack. Stand firm in the knowledge that Jesus has already secured your freedom. As it is written in Revelation 12:11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Believe it and declare it, you are free. That sickness, that cycle of debt and depression, and any other negative force in your life no longer have any legal ground to stand on. Through the blood of Jesus, you have been redeemed from every form of lawful captivity. The only thing that can truly hold you captive is a lack of knowledge. Be grateful for the enlightenment God has provided, helping you understand His provisions for your freedom. Plead the blood of Jesus, for it is your guarantee of liberty. In the same way that night gives way to a new day, the difficult circumstances in your life are being replaced by the light of Christ. The weight of depression that has weighed heavily on you and transformed you into a mere shadow of yourself is lifting right now. The debt that has kept you from holding your head high is being settled at this very moment. The challenging situation that has brought you to tears is being resolved as we speak. You will soon find yourself singing and dancing with joy because your time of sorrow has come to an end. Envision this with the eyes of faith and declare it until it becomes your reality. God possesses the power to change everything. He can quiet the storm and guide you through unscathed. All you need to do is call out to him. Jesus' disciples encountered a storm and they cried out to him for help. Jesus admonished their fear and calmed the wind. Reach out to Jesus in faith and don't allow fear to take root in your heart. Fear not, only believe and you will witness the glory of God. Isaiah 43, 19 states, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is the God of new beginnings and renewal. No situation is too challenging for him to handle. The problem may seem like a mountain before you, but it is insignificant before God. He will provide you with a fresh start and make everything new again. Hold on to God's word, which promises healing and well-being, and trust in his words. By allowing God to take control, you will experience a complete transformation in your life. Do not believe that this is the end. Silence the negative voice that has been whispering in your ear. Reject the voice that has been dragging you down. The Lord is here. The one who calms the stormy seas is with you. Claim God's word right now and confront the devil, saying, I shall not die. I will fulfill my purpose. This is not the end of me. This setback is temporary, and I will bounce back. I am not oppressed. I am blessed. I am loved. 
I am forgiven. My future is secured in Christ. Keep declaring these positive affirmations and you will see everything in your life turn around for the better. You are not beyond the possibility of falling into sin or temptation. You are not infallible. This is not a license to sin and keep yielding to sin. This is a message of hope for anyone who has struggled with sin in their life. God has powerful words about sin and it's essential not to miss them. You might be facing a series of temptations now and it feels like the circumstances are drawing you away from God. You might have been standing upright in your faith or even soaring on eagle's wings when one day you experienced a fall. It may not seem significant in itself, but it was enough to keep you down. Perhaps you gave in under pressure this week. You may feel as if God is far away. You may feel discouraged about life at the moment. You may feel embarrassed and humiliated by the things you did. You may feel weak in your heart and think you'll be unable to recover from the fall. But when God looks at you, He looks beyond the fault and at your heart of loyalty towards Him. He sees your pain, bitter tears, and earnest devotion to please Him. He sees your wavering attempts to follow Him. He sees your helplessness. And even though you think you have fallen because you feel you hit your back against the floor, know that you're not yet down entirely. Though you fall seven times, God's right hand will lift you up seven more times. Psalm 37, 24 says, Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. The good news for you today is that you are not utterly cast down because God is upholding you. Yes, when you fall, God will catch you. He won't leave you falling. He will stretch his arm to save you, to draw you closer to himself. Consider the example of Peter, an apostle who denied knowing and following his master Jesus, despite insisting earlier that he would never do such a thing. Jesus had already warned him that the devil wished to have him, which meant his total fall. But Jesus Christ caught Peter from falling and departing from the faith when he prayed for him. In the same manner, God catches you when you're on the brink of falling. So believe it. He will uphold you. He will pray for you. He will raise you and set your feet on the solid rock. God's love and grace are abundant, and He is always there to lift you up when you stumble. Don't let your mistakes and weaknesses define you or your relationship with God. Instead, turn to Him in your moments of struggle and trust that He will guide you through it all. Remember that God is patient and He understands your struggles. His love for you is unwavering and He will always be there to help you get back on your feet. Beloved, God's greatest desire is for you to experience His kingdom while you live on earth. In Philippians 3.20, it is said, But your citizenship is in heaven, and you eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. As a citizen of heaven, you are brought under the divine system and heavenly economy. When you pray to God and say, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, do you fully comprehend the meaning behind these words, or are you merely reciting the Lord's Prayer? The kingdom of God is firmly established in the heavens and extends to the earth and beyond. The Bible tells us that God sits in heaven with the earth as his footstool. He is the king of this realm, and his will is eternal and unopposed. God is self-sufficient and does not require anyone to maintain his sovereignty. It is out of His boundless love that He has granted us citizenship in His domain, an extraordinary privilege. Therefore, when you pray for God's kingdom to come and reign in your life as it does in heaven, you are essentially saying, I want nothing else but your will. This desire can be summed up in the statement, I want you more than I want your provisions. This is what it means for God's kingdom to come into your life. However, it can be challenging for the worldly-minded to willingly live under God's influence, but the Holy Spirit teaches you to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. He is the reason for the order in heaven. Scripture describes this in the book of Revelation, where the 24 elders cast their crowns before God and proclaim, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. This transcends mere emotions. 
God has a specific will and purpose for your life, and there are principles and guidelines to which you must adhere, much like the laws, rules, and regulations of the secular world. God's will for your marriage is happiness. His will for your academics and businesses is excellence. His will for your health is divine and free from illness. His will for you is good and not evil. Therefore, Praying for His will to be established in your life is a noble endeavor. The question remains, are you prepared to be inconvenienced by God's will? Do you trust Him enough to go all the way with Him and for Him beyond your feelings and comfort zone? Jesus Himself prayed, If it is possible, let this cut pass from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. He knew that God's will is perfect. May you receive the grace to live according to God's will and eternal purpose, with Christ as the King and Lord of your life, in Jesus' name. Like the video and type Amen if you love the Lord. Click the link in the description to discover a limited time special offer on a life-altering technique designed to help you manifest God's blessings.